Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Tiny Brains podcast. I'm Kevin Joyce, CEO at Tiny Brains, and with me is Peter Graham, the Brigadier of Brains at Tiny Brains. Hello. So, as ever, what we do on this podcast, and what we'll be doing today, is taking a look at the biggest stories in XR from the previous week. And uh, this week, we have not one, but two hardware launches. I know, it was a busy week, wasn't it? So, we... But there were two very, two very different hardware launches, weren't they, really? One was rather gigantic in, in scope. The other one was a little bit more muted. So as you probably already know, MetaQuest 3S launched on the 15th of October. And if whether you do or do not know, the Vive Vision Focus also arrives at the end of the week on the 18th. It's funny how times are changing, right? I mean, a new Vive headset five, six, seven years ago, would have been the bomb. And now it's, it's you know, it is the second run, the second tier, if not third tier. Um, we love you, Vive. Come back. <laughs> make, it, make it real again. Um, but yeah, MetaQuest 3S, everybody's loving it. I got no problems. That, that is essentially it, isn't it? There, there's been a, there's been quite a few reviews. Um, yeah, for 300 bucks, everyone's going, yeah, it's really good. You know that there are the 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 standard complaints across the board that say you know things like the Fresnel lenses and the screen resolution isn't as good uh, as the as the three, which was obvious because you know it's it's cheaper. But they're saying for value for money and for entry level, if you've got a Quest Two or if you're new to VR, three S is a great way to go. This is the general consensus that I've been seeing that um, it is the upgrade for a Quest Two. Uh, from a Quest Two to a Quest Three is great, but it's like six hundred bucks. Whereas a Quest 2 to a Quest 3 S, 300, you're not losing, you're not losing enough to warrant that extra 300 bucks. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, Quest 3 S for everybody. Well, yes, whereas the Vision Focus is a little bit more, isn't it? PC VR focused, it's a, it's a grand for consumers. And it, it also offers Fresnel lenses, which is a little bit unusual seeing that things like headsets like the Quest 3 are now moving to pancake lenses for better clarity. But it does have, the, the vision focus does have some uh, great resolution. Uh, it has eye tracking and some of those extra little advanced features that some users may want. But but you can get free Quest 3 S's for the same price. <laughs> And indeed, so you can get one for all the family almost, you know. Yeah. Um, moving on, we have Wave Returns. I'm not really sure what your notes mean here, Peter. What, what does Wave Returns mean? Hello. Well, you may, well, this is going back to the... Is it the so Wave? It's, it, well, it's, yeah, you, they were sometimes called Wave or The Wave, but yes, it was the VR... What do you call it? A VR concert platform, really, and... This remember? is what I was imagining. Uh, uh, yeah, I know the the founder of this original version of this quite well. Um, nice guy. Um, and yes, it, it was at its time, it was a, a great platform that saw some success and then stopped seeing success. Um, so what's going on now? Because I don't know this news. Well, it has just released a closed beta and it's coming back with VR support. So a little bit of a history lesson. The Wave originally launched in 2017 for PC VR headsets, offering VR concerts and teamed up with several no notable musicians and artists and provided some really cool looking raves and concerts and, you know, mu musical experiences. But it was possibly a little bit ahead of its time as well, because the, the user base just wasn't there in 2017, 2018. In 2020, pandemic year, it got a huge investment of 30 million because nobody was doing concerts anymore, were they? You know, it was all locked down. In 2021, they dropped VR support. So the main reason they got in, started in the first place, they dropped VR support and things kind of, you know, they, they went 2D, so they were on like PC and general other platforms, but they dropped VR support and they have not really heard much of them since they can they've tended to do virtual productions for people like the weekend and justin bieber in that time but now they like i say on the 17th of october they launched their closed beta which you know means they're coming back strong with some more uh more affiliation with more new artists and we're going to get some more vr concerts so it's still early days though 
So yeah, I do wonder how much the original team is involved in this relaunch. Um, I'd be keen to do a bit of digging and find out if we can see the guys going right back to, as you say, they debuted uh, publicly in 2017, but the, the team were working on it, I remember, way back in like 2015. Um, so uh, yeah, get some old school VR up in here. <laughs> we like a bit of old school VR. Everybody loves old school VR, except the people who are too young to remember it. Um, so, uh, next up, we've got some gaming news. Yes, but this we've one, got, we've got this one's quite funny. Of, yeah, we've got a couple of bits of uh, gaming news actually. Uh, the first one is Dig VR, which it, it has has sort of come up from nowhere, really, isn't it? It's, I'm seeing it in a lot of places. People are really looking forward to this, and it's it is a simulator. It's by Just Add Water, the people that did Train Sim VR. They also uh, did Sniper Elite VR, and Dig VR was due to launch on the 24th of October. When they got that date, they there was no there's nothing really big around around that launch until Batman came along and officially announced the 22nd of October, two days beforehand. So just have water gone, whoa, we don't want to release two days after Batman. You know, that might stump sales a little bit. So talking to Meta. They've moved it, and so they're now Dig VR is now coming out on the fourteenth of November. So, in traditional gaming, we we get that it's more common now. It's happened for for decades, but it's more common now for studios to come out and say, "We're not going to launch in that window because Call of Duty, FIFA, whatever it may be, is launching at that point. So we're going to delay into next year, or we're going to speed up and come out earlier, and whatever else." And it, it, it happens quite uh, in gaming quite a lot in traditional gaming. And it's much more public in recent years that this has ha been happening, which is great. A bit of transparency. I don't recall a time this has happened before in VR. No, normally, yeah, normally when schedules are set, they generally set unless there's a, a big delay for, you know, te technical reasons, you know, oh. marmal polish and everything else. And the statement that they did release, that Just Add Water released, did say they're going to spend extra time, you know, working on the title. But the main thing was... You know, the Cape Crusader has like, you know. It's, it's, it's nice. Uh, I, I appreciate just our, what Just That Water are doing here. Um, this is the studio that has been going for a long time. Before VR, they were doing lots of odd world ports and things. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're not they're not strangers to big titles themselves and going up against big titles. So good on your Just That Water. Hold your ground, dig your hole. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in November. Uh, moving on, some more gaming news. Two this week. Um, we have Augmented Empire Returns. <laughs> well, going back to the, the retro vibe of uh, you know the wave coming back, we have Augmented Empire, which probably half of you or most of you don't even remember. It was a it was a strategy game from CodeSync, which released in 2017 for the Oculus Go and the Gear VR. Remember those headsets? And I, this, behind me. I, I reviewed this back at the time and I loved it. If you if you loved um games like XCOM, for example, this was that style of game. Top down, you could move your character around and you know it was all stealthy and yeah, he had to plan each and every move. And it was a delight. It was it was really good and worked really well on Oculus Go and those those type of headsets utilizing sort of the minimal power that they had. Well, Coatsync have announced that they're bringing Augmented Empire back. And it's coming to Quest, and it's going to have a, a mixed reality component to it. It's you know, so you, you're probably a bit like maybe Demio. You're going to be able to maybe put it on a table and run around these environments and control your character through these environments. So CodeSync were uh, big believers in VR early on, um, doing what, half a dozen games on the CB1 right. and early Quest, and they seem to have got a bit. Mm, uh, scared of the waters you know a, a bit of trepidation into vr and slowed things down um but so I'm, I'm really glad to see them coming back uh it's a great studio they've made some great ti titles uh both in vr and in traditional gaming um so everybody go out and support this and let's get coat sync back in because uh they're great we want more so it, it, you know if all the same people are still there then they've got a you know, like you say, they've got a great history, but they've also got great technical experience as well. Mm -hmm. So it would be lovely to see how they remaster this because they are remastering it. So they are, you know, upgrading it in terms of textures, 
for the Quest 3 and for the Quest 2. So it's going to look prettier. But what else they might be doing? And we really want, you know, Coat Sync back in VR. Go on, Coat Sync. You can do it. We believe in you. Anyway, that's all we've got uh, for this week. Uh, it's not the busiest of weeks because everybody's playing their new toys. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And if there's anything uh, that you would like to see discussed on this show, please do let us know. Contact us at one of the millions of addresses. You can contact us up on X, LinkedIn, Facebook, email, carrier pigeon, whatever you like. Um, and we would love to discuss your news in XR. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again next week.